Now that we've looked at an overview of cell respiration, we can begin this next flowchart and just look at what we entitle an introduction, let's say, to the process. Not specifically the steps, but the overall key ideas behind um, the each, each of the metabolic pathways that we're going to be seeing in the next couple of videos. So in this introduction, we first have to establish some key facts. First and foremost, we know for a fact the idea that sunlight and food provide something for an organism. Sunlight for plants and food for us, let's say, provide what? They provide a great source of energy. So we'll write down in big letters, energy. They are high energy sort of giving things. They give us a lot of energy. And so it's our job to not only get this energy, but we have to do something with it. We can't just absorb it. We actually need to, and the word that we use here is harvest the energy. Need to harvest. We need to harvest this energy. And this can't just be done by just standing outside and, you know, absorbing the sunlight. We can't do that because we're not plants. And plants themselves can't just assume that the sunlight is going to be the perfect form of energy that they can use for their own processes. Food is not the perfect form of energy for us either. We have to harvest it. We have to break it down and we have to undergo several several really amazing mechanisms and processes so that we can finally harvest the energy that's within the food, that's within the sunlight, into a more usable, let's say, user-friendly form. We can thank, let's say, something like our digestive system for this. And in Bio 1, Biology 115, we're not going to be talking about that digestive the digestive system just yet, that's for bio 2, but we can simply say that the digestive system does a great job of breaking things down. That's what it does. It digests, it harvests the stuff that we eat so that it can turn into energy. We can specifically say something like um, the carbs that we have or eat, they turn into what? They turn into simple sugars like monosaccharides for us to utilize. The proteins that we eat, these turn into the simpler components that our body can use, like amino acids. And even the fats that we eat, the fats themselves provide us with two things, actually. We can break them down into the glycerol component of the fat, or even the fatty acids themselves. So we'll write that down. So overall, what we notice here is this idea that we break down large things, food, into smaller things, the, let's say, um, monomer components so that these things can then enter the bloodstream. And once they enter the bloodstream, that's when we start to look at cell respiration. That's when we start to look at how the cell itself, on a cellular level, utilizes the stuff that's been broken down by our, let's say, macro digestive system for its own benefit, for its own purposes of harvesting energy. And we're going to be looking at, at that in great detail starting now. The next thing we want to look at is this idea of entering the bloodstream. <coughs> but more specifically, excuse me, we want to look at cellular respiration. So I'm going to drag this one down right next to it. Cellular respiration. So this is the first time we're actually writing down the idea of cellular respiration. Because now this goes hand in hand with this. The idea of entering the bloodstream. Why would we need these things, these components to enter the bloodstream? Let's say sugars, because that's what cell respiration is all about. Why would we need a sugar, like a glucose molecule, let's say, to enter the bloodstream? Because once it's in the bloodstream, it can then be inputted into a cell. So that the cell can respire and breathe, let's say, with it. Cell respiration can be simply defined as the idea of when we convert energy um, stored in nutrients, like carbs, let's say, stored in nutrients, I'll just write, uh, I'll just write, uh, <laughs> not, stored in, uh, let's say nutrients, that stands for nutrients, um, chemical bonds, so the chemical bonds of nutrients, So we convert energy stored in nutrients, chemical bonds, and what we do is we take this conversion of energy and we store it somewhere. That energy is stored in ATP's bonds instead. So the way that our bodies work is that we cannot utilize the energy that's within our food. We have to break our food down into much simpler components. Let's say we have to break down a piece of bread into just the glucose components, the glucose molecules that that bread is composed of, 
and then we have to take that glucose and then store it in a different form of energy because the currency that our body uses energy in is not glucose but it's ATP and that's what cell respiration is all about. This process is going to be aerobic it, can, it will involve oxygen at some point. It can also uh, have anaerobic steps, uh, steps that are involved without oxygen. But most importantly, it's something that all cells have to do. That's why it's so important to study it. Every single cell undergoes cellular respiration in almost the same exact manner, and it's sort of a universal, let's say, component of life. The idea of cell respiration, taking something from the environment of the cell, breaking it down, and then utilizing that broken down stuff for its energy and converting it into the cellular currency of ATP. That's the beauty of this reaction and these reactions that we're going to be looking at um, in much greater detail as we continue this lecture. To finish off, we're going, we can speak about um, the idea of aerobic respiration specifically um, and specifically uh, aerobic respiration uh, in eukaryotes. So we'll just write EU for eukaryotes. What happens is, like we mentioned, cell respiration is what? An anabolic or catabolic process? It's of course, from our first video, um, catabolism. It's the breakdown of nutrients. So we'll write catabolism of nutrients. And specifically, through this catabolism of nutrients, we get some major products. And these are products that are um, on the other side of that cell respiration, that famous cell respiration equation. Do you remember what it was? It's C6. H12O6, that's glucose, plus what? What do we breathe in? O2 will give us these following products. And these are the breakdown products, let's say, of glucose and oxygen. The products include CO2, carbon dioxide, that's what we breathe out, and that's why we breathe it out. It's a, it's a byproduct. H2O is another product. And then this is the one that's really famous, energy. This is what we're going to be talking about. How do we get all the energy that we need, all the, all the energy that our cells need, and thus all the energy that we need by taking some nutrients and breaking them down for their product components like energy, water, and carbon dioxide. That'll be the rest of our discussion from this point forward. Another thing about aerobic respiration is that it involves redox reactions. And we understand from our previous flowcharts that redox reactions are reactions that involve reduction steps and oxidation steps. And we're just going to reiterate that this isn't the idea of the transfer of electrons um, from somebody to somebody else, from, from, let's say, nutrients in this situation. The electrons within nutrients are going to transfer in a way that's going to cause redox reactions to occur. We're going to use these electrons, because remember, redox is about reduction and oxidation. We're going to use the electrons from our nutrients to either reduce something, have it gain an electron, or we're going to have that electron, let's say, leave, and we're going to lose an electron from something that's going to be the oxidation. And we'll get into those details in just a second. In addition, uh, something to sort of marvel at, let's say, so the beauty of this is that it's 30 steps, this whole process of cell respiration, 30 intricate and beautifully created and just amazingly accurate and perfect steps that involve 30 separate enzymes. So this is like the beautiful nature of biology that I really, really love, this idea that it's so complex, but at the end of the day, it's one of the most important processes in us. It's the reason why we need oxygen. It's the reason why we breathe out CO2 for plants. It's the reason how we get energy. This is the beauty of this process that we'll definitely be looking at as we continue this discussion. Of course, the famous molecule involved in this is glucose, good old glucose. We cannot forget about that. Glucose is considered our starting material, and I mentioned that in that famous cellular respiration equation. It's our starting material, um, and most of food, let's say, is composed of uh, glucose. And for the purposes of this class, we're going to consider that all cell respiration starts with glucose. And that's all we need to know there. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is continuing and finishing up this discussion on cell respiration and aerobic respiration specifically by finally writing down that famous chemical reaction of cellular respiration and looking at the specific oxidizing and reducing components of it.